The call to arms has been given to the Iraqi people in Baghdad. We got an article on the Voice of Russia. It's showing that the thousands of Iraqis are parading in Baghdad and showing their readiness and willingness to fight the Sunni militants, ISIS. So there's hundreds of thousands paraded in Baghdad and other cities. Show a force to display their readiness to fight ISIS. And they had military uniforms and they were carrying some rifles. They were marching in different cities in a response to a call by Muqtada al Sadr. You may have heard of that guy. He called on his followers last week to organize a parade to show they can protect holy sites and shrines. Thousands marched across Baghdad as they left the neighborhood of al Sadr city. A number of residents in Baghdad's largest Shiite-dominated neighborhoods of al Sadr city and al Shula is estimated at 3 million. Well, they could get three million, which that's a stretch, but I'm just saying, if they could get three million with guns in their hands, well, they would, ISIS would be frozen in their tracks there. ISIS would have a little better weaponry, but ISIS doesn't have any planes or choppers or no tanks that I'm aware of yet. More than two and a half million Shiites have reportedly volunteered across Iraq to take up arms and help the army defeat ISIS. And they're getting paid, just like military personnel. Maybe not the same thing. I don't know what they pay them, but Maliki ordered a monthly income of 500,000 dinars, which is $447 for each volunteer. On top of that, he's given each volunteer 125,000 dinars in food allowance, which that would be about a, let's see, a fourth of that. And you're looking at about 100, and about 112 bucks, I guess. So you're looking at total compensation of five hundred and fifty nine dollars don't know how far that'll go over there in Baghdad according to the article there's been a call to arms I didn't know if anybody had known that but apparently it's coming down to the people the Iraq military needs some help We got, uh, what, what did he send first? 275 guys from here. Then he sent 300 more. But we're going to see what ISIS does. We're going to see if ISIS is satisfied taking over that oil refinery. Or whether they want some of these holy sites. It, it it wouldn't make sense to me because I'm not privy to all the information that's, that's actually there. None of us are privy to all of it, I guess. He could take the town or try to, but it doesn't make logistical sense that if you're severely outnumbered to make a move further. If they take the oil field, the oil refinery, and control it, actually control it, and have a way to collect the funds from production of it, that would seem to me to be what they would be after. recognition of their power 
on a global stage, a seat at the table of the governing body in the politics of the direction of Iraq, and money to fund themselves and arm themselves and grow themselves to where they have further and further influence, if not control, in Iraq. Well, that makes sense to me. I don't see, I cannot see them taking over the entire country. But if something were to happen, and you did see them come into Baghdad, and you did see them take Baghdad over, and they, and they pretty well controlled Iraq, well, wouldn't that be a dead tip-off to you that it was allowed to happen? It was a setup so that they could? Something to consider. Well, I wanted to show you that they had people volunteering, and that they were paying their volunteers in volunteer service to help fight against these. I haven't checked the the uh, corrupt news media over here on the television or anything yet. I've just been sporting around over in international news and seeing how they're putting things out. So I'll talk to you all soon when I come up with some more interesting things for you. The world's a-changing before your very eyes. Prophecy is unfolding and being fulfilled. cannot be stopped. At a certain point we had a chance, but apparently we didn't take our chance. Because remember God said if he would heal our nation if we would just turn away from our sins and come back to him and pray to him and, and live according to his ways. His teachings, the things, the good things that he wanted for us. He said he would heal the nation if we would do things like that. But we're not doing things like that. I mean, all you got to do is look around. I mean, look at all the cities. You know, your larger, faster-paced cities. You know, you got the drugs everywhere. You got the prostitution going. You got the pornography going. You got the gangs going. You got the homosexual agenda going and becoming accepted. And it will continue as far as that agenda goes. Whatever state it goes to that's against it, they're simply going to do what they've done before. They're going to petition it to the Supreme Court those judges are going to go ahead and overturn the ruling and getting married and stuff is is going to be made legal everywhere. It's going to go that way. You know, we can keep praying that somehow somebody will grow some morality in our judicial system, but it doesn't seem that it is mandated end times that that is going to happen. We're, we seem to be too far past the midway point. And judgment appears to be handed down against our country. And when you look in the past, if you would open your Bibles, if you haven't, please do and educate yourself. It's not only your guidance book to live by and find salvation, it also teaches you historical events in the past, the judgments set down for wrong conduct. I mean, every, 
every time there was somewhere that was engaging in bestiality, homosexuality, drunkenness, you know, all this, these bad things, the judgment was set down against them, and it was severe, and it was carried out. And whatever city with the peoples in it that comprise that city, that was it. It was over for them. So you know the morals of America have went way down the crapper. It's not all of us, but there's a lot of us. You know, it's just, that's just the way it is. A lot of things that are unmoralistic have become acceptable to more and more and more people. Somebody out there is going to say, moralistic, and, and whose morals? Yours? Why? You know, they're going to say something crazy. And I'm going to say, God's morals. He's the standard. You get it? It's not about the now in this world. It's about the now which gets you to the next phase. And what's going to happen to you in the next phase? Because there's only two there's only two options for you later on. You're either going to be in heaven with him somewhere good or you're not going to be with him. And that is a place of torture and shame and sorrow and punishment, hopelessness. Can't make a choice for you. Can't push you into anything. All I can do is warn you. You know, there's plenty of pastors, priests, and I haven't heard anything from our last pope that, that don't preach the warning anymore. For the wages of sin is death. You, know, you don't want to die the second death. You don't want separation from God. You truly don't understand, some of you, what that means. Because you have no... I guess you have no faith. You don't believe it. Well, you need to find some faith. Because the time's coming down. Things are ramping up. You're going to make a choice sooner or later. The choice that you've already made now of your non-belief. You're going to have one more time. Somewhere down this line of time. There's going to be something going on. Because at that point is going to be your final time. To choose one side or the other. If I were you, I'd do it now. And I'd start cleaning my life up. I'd start storing my treasures up in heaven. Instead of storing treasures down here. And wanting more stuff. Wanting more better stuff. It's not what you want. It's what you need. God doesn't provide people what they want. He provides them what they need. Because he knows what you need. So there you go. The Baghdad information has been brought to you today.